As the number of content creators making President Play D&D continues to expand, there is one in particular whose channel has been growing with an increasing popularity. Having little D&D experience, this has not stopped them from creating a fantastic homebrew world full of fantasy and comedy, starring Donna, the most powerful woman barbarian. Their channel, though only containing 10 uploads, has already accumulated 1,200 subs and has been viewed over 49,000 times in just over a month. Possibly the only female creator within the small number of creators that take part in this niche genre, she has proven to be a force to be recognised and she honours me with her time here as she answers my and your questions. I am Crafty GG, this is Roll for Discussion and I am joined with rising star Coco Mibi. Good evening matey. Hi, <laughs> I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Well, I'm very glad that you uh, have made it out of your busy schedule. It's Honestly, it's fantastic. I didn't realise I was going to get uh, another content creator on here so soon after Malifrex. So it's it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I'll be really excited to see um, all the other creators and, and get to ask them questions too. Yeah, with any luck, uh, with any luck over time, I, I, I do have, uh, I can't say who, because we haven't secured a, a, a date yet, but there is another one of the president uh, content created uh, D and I really messed it up. But basically, another one in the group. Uh, they are very much interested in taking part in this. So I hope uh, just Ooh, I'm excited. Mm, uh, there should be uh, some intrigue now for those listening during the premiere. It's like, oh, all right. Leave a, <laughs> leave a comment down below, people. Who do you think is going to be possibly next? <laughs> oh yeah try to take a guess yes mm. <laughs> uh so uh my first question is going to be what got you started in wanting to make this type of a content channel um so as i said in my first video uh i came across malathrex's channel and prior to finding him i had been getting recommended a lot of the president's meme stuff mm. and i watched a couple of them and then i i got recommended his channel and um i can't remember where in the campaign he was at i remember i started with the long movies so the really long form content oh yeah and i kind of realized that it it was really appealing because it was something that you could turn on and have on in the background and that's the way i like to consume uh videos is i'll kind of watch them as i'm doing work or other things so mm -hmm that long form back and forth almost story based content is really what drew me into it that's really nice it's kind of like um having an audio book isn't it really or like you know yes. listening to some music or something it's just it's quite nice to have something going on I, I i do the same thing i i tend to listen to a lot of the content creators while i'm driving to and from work it's just yeah it, exactly yeah, yeah. Yeah, is I did talk. I've touched upon this in a in a previous interview, but it I quite like the fact that there's there's all this variety within this group where you do have people that have more of a uh, it's just more audio based, um, and then there are others that have a more of a visual based, and so it appeals to such a wider audience. So you can have someone like you said, you know, you like to listen to that sort of stuff in the background. So something like Malafrex's video is sort of ideal then for yourself because it's like oh, it's perfect don't need i, I could ob you could obviously watch it if you wanted to you're looking at the still images and stuff that are coming up but it's not necessary for you to actually understand everything that's going on in there you know certainly yeah and i i really like too that all the different creators i feel like we have our own flavors um of this type of content uh so i think it appeals to like a wide range of people you can kind of go to each of the creators for a different feel um in the campaigns yeah exactly i think that's probably one of the things i've enjoyed the most is is everybody has their own sort of unique spin on how they uh portray their stories i mean you, you obviously are going to get some similarities and stuff and i think it's it's quite nice if if like one creator inspires another like I say, for instance, my own current campaign, I've got a lot of inspiration from what I've seen with other with the other content creators. You know, uh, things like... Yes, the, definitely, yeah. Yeah, things like the, the battle map, showing stats, you know, that sort of thing. Um, 
I, I think it's I think it's fantastic and it really helps fuel that inspiration and hopefully that sort of thing can sort of bounce back to the others as well and that way then hope if anyone's got any like issues with like writer's block or like you know it's like oh I want to try like maybe try a new sort of design or a new look or like how could I like, improve this and then they might look at one of the others and go oh I quite like how they do their bit there or you know that sort of thing and so sort of, little bits and pieces from it and it could also help them for you know future content creators as well they can look at all these yeah it really helps to yeah go on, go on. sorry sorry no no you please go ahead. i was gonna say i was gonna say it really helps to see like what works in the videos um i've really learned a lot from yours seeing the kind of stat blocks and then the maps that you put up hmm. they help a lot for me to kind of um picture what's going on but then also think back to um combat that i've had in my campaign and think of like if i was trying to map this out how would it look or how could i do that so yeah yeah oh that's fantastic uh, i do i do i i so my experience with dnd is very is is a lot uh it's quite limited i've only been playing for a couple of years and so i was very much uh the people that i played with liked to use maps but that they hand drew them but they were not to be disrespectful but they were very basic it was like literally they'd have like paint opened up and they draw a couple of lines in and there'd be a letter there be like right crafty that's you we're like oh yes i could tell you you have my curve <laughs> so well and, <laughs> and and this this giant x here that's the ogre we're like oh I see. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and then, um, i have seen a... <laughs> that's so funny i have seen some of the like um art channels unrelated to D D stuff hmm. but make, um little sculptures for D campaigns oh yeah oh yeah i've uh i've, I've got a buddy who uh, he was looking at doing that with uh, warhammer like you know just like <gasps> painting oh. them and stuff like that it's very cool i, I quite like it it again it's i probably find it's quite a very niche genre though wouldn't it it's it's because it's it's not something that's for everybody <clears throat> But it's definitely if you've got that interest, like you know, you enjoy painting models and stuff like that. It's something that will definitely hook you, you know. Yes, yeah. Unfortunately, that's not something you could sit there and just listen to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, no. And now we've uh, done the not. base paint, and oh, look at that! So like, no, I can't look at it. I'm I'm busy working. Like, come on, <laughs> describe it to me. But it does sort of get to my right, um, right. thing about theatre of the mind, and I think that's that's one of the things that obviously. If you're gonna do if your if your main focus is gonna be audio based, then you need to make sure that your theatre of the mind is is so on point that anyone who's listening can get a clear idea of what it is that you're describing. Yes, definitely. Mm. That's why I, I very much uh, very much a big fan of AI guy. Uh, he's so articulate. Honestly, sometimes I think I need to have like a thesaurus, like to hand, just to understand half the things that he's explaining, or I might have to like uh. listen them through like a couple of times. He's a, uh, he's very good with his descriptions, you know. Yes, yeah, and it helps to. Um, I come with a, I have a background in, in writing, and um, one of the things that I've tried to take into my writing is that I try to express information in two different ways mm -hmm. so um if i'm going to explain how something looks maybe i try to explain how it feels to the touch or something like that um because it just adds that extra level of detail but then it also helps um pe not people who like i'm thinking of reading i was gonna say people who speed read you can't read videos um <laughs> maybe people who are, are uh doing something else so their attention is divided it, it helps them grab onto those details if you kind of give it to them twice in a sneaky way uh yeah yeah i see what you mean just uh, just having that small little bit of information like that sort of thing can stick their mind yes yeah no lovely well speaking about yeah. styles i'd say i very much enjoy uh your your the the visuals that you use the artwork as it were um what made you decide to go down that route with that particular sort of style because obviously we've got uh let's go with like ai guy and clone um very they've gone for very realistic looks 
uh, myself, it's a very similar actually uh, style. It's that very anime kind of look uh, to them. Yes. So. Uh, um. I, I well okay. I was. I watch all these different channels, and um, so I I think that I wanted to have my own distinct style, and I hadn't seen a lot of people do that heavily stylized kind of appearance especially with the npcs um i think our the art style for our um player characters is pretty similar that like anime ish but you can still see a bit of uh not realistic stuff do you know what i'm trying to say yeah no i I completely get where you're coming from Okay. It's, it's, they're, still, they're still like yeah. recognizable but they're not like over the top anime it's not that they've got they've got like yes. great big bulging eyes right yes yes <laughs> um so yeah i just try to put my own flavor in it and i really love the expressiveness of having a like vibrant setting mm. um and so showing art with the vibrant setting especially like um very saturated colors i love i just think it i don't know it draws the the no, it's nice like i said I, I very much enjoy the the style of it and i, I noticed that you obviously you've started adding uh, more stat blocks uh, to your characters as well yes i learned that from your videos um hey. i really like <laughs> i really like the information that it brought um it kind of gave some context to the fights and so i said well i'll try that out and see how it goes and people seem to like it so i think i'll stick with it <laughs> Yeah, well, <clears throat> sort of going back to what we're saying about with the theatre of the mind, there's only, you know, obviously so much that people are going to retain as the stories, like, progress. So having that, for especially sort of, again, it doesn't necessarily have to be there if people are just listening, but for those that maybe want to watch, it's really helpful to look at that. Excuse me one moment. <clears throat> um, it's really helpful for those that want to be able to see this sort of information. Uh, especially like yes. you know, when people do play D and D, they love to have you know have their stats available and stuff and be able to see what is it on paper that they can do. Not everybody is always going to be able to retain everything that gets said. So yeah, it, I've had several. I've had several viewers ask like if they could see the the um character sheet like the character yes exactly and i was kind of surprised at that i was like really you want to see this i didn't think anybody would want to see it oh no trust me the the appeal is definitely there because you're gonna get people that will then they'll look at these and they'll have uh, their own sort of ideas like when you got like future combats coming up and they'll be like oh well uh, this guy's got these spells here so maybe you should go you know look at doing these tactics and you know stuff like and then obviously you're gonna get your rules lawyers i've had them I'm going to say, well, actually, your, your previous character shouldn't have been able to do that because it quite clearly states in your character sheet that they've actually got a plus five here, not a plus 17, as you tried to make out. Uh, <laughs> 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 and, you know, I'm all for it. The more the, the, the more I hear about this and stuff, the, the bigger my smile gets because it's just sort of like, you know what, that's great. It means you're paying attention. Fantastic. I love it. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But, uh, you know, it's definitely something you should uh, consider. I mean, um, so I do it on my Discord. I have a separate uh, bit where it does call it character sheet. So all the information is there if anyone wants to watch it. Now, obviously, not everyone wants to join the Discord. Fine. So I'm trying to see what else I can do. I think I think it was Relic was the first one I saw do it, where I think he uploaded links to uh, PDFs, and so he had those available. So people could just click on those links if they wanted to, and you could just see the the character sheets. So it's it's something yeah. it's something that might be worth considering to do. You know, if 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 there's a demand for it, um, you know, there it is. It's just that, that bit of information's there, and you might find because I've I've seen you know what people are saying on your um on your on your channel and stuff. Some very very nice, very positive, uh, helpful uh, feedback. And I think it will only enhance then that sort of level of like uh, supportiveness, you know, because people will be there like, oh, did you know that you could possibly do this? And it might help you sort of branch out a little bit more into the creativity side of like what they could possibly do in a, in a, in a combat. Yeah, everybody's been so nice in my comments. I was kind of, I was waiting for somebody to say, this is ridiculous of it, you know, but everybody's been so nice. And even like, um, 
people who say that they're rule lawyers, I really don't mind because I know so little about the rule. I mean, I read the rule book and everything, but some of it like went right out my head <laughs> when I didn't understand it. So people kind of explaining things to me in the comments and context is really helpful because um, it just teaches me more. Oh yeah, yeah exactly, hundred percent. That's why I said you know I I love it if you know, people come back with uh, feedback, even if it's even if it's constructive criticism. To me, that's like that's fantastic, yeah. you know, because that just all that's going to do is help me improve and bring out a better story for people. Yes, yeah, but, um, definitely. But that does actually come up to what my next question was: was how have you felt about the level of response that you receive from the community? Um, it's it's overwhelming in a positive way. Mm. <laughs> um, I didn't I didn't think um the videos would get as much traction as they have. So it's kind of been like I've been in a state of sh shock, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you know your first video, your first few videos started started going up. The, the first thing that catches the interest, obviously, is the thumbnail, and I, I see the, yes. the sort of style, and I was like, oh wow! Like straight away, I'm like, okay, I gotta see what this is about. And then afterwards, like listening, I listened to the first couple episodes, I was like, ah, oh, damn, this is another one who's gonna go past me. <laughs> no, I mean your your campaigns have um they have your own style to it and I really appreciate the like extra bits that you put in with the animations and stuff. So I don't oh, know yeah. if I can commit to doing that level. <laughs> oh no no I'm 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 only messing around. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The fact that you have progressed as quickly as you have like with the support on there how quick like the fact that you're doing like an hour's worth of content each time you know, oh yeah i'm kind of crazy for that I, th I think it's amazing <laughs> i think it's absolutely amazing i wish i could put that much into a into a video you know uh, i just like i just start writing and it just comes out and then by the time i get to the end of it i'm like oh, well, I need to finish, you know, this part of the story before I move on to the next episode, and then I just keep writing, and by the time I'm finished, the scripts are usually, like, ten to 12,000 words. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably uh, get get through your 11 labs pretty quickly, then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why everybody donating is so kind, because 11 labs, like, the difference in the tiers like the cost and the number of characters you get i'm like i need something a little bit more than what i have but not so expensive anyway yeah i, I for the first time went over my hundred thousand limit and yes it has the thing where it's like it, you're only paying like 30 cents for every extra thousand but it's like that's great i needed another fifty thousand like oh it's, yeah it builds yeah. up quickly it's like okay so you want up you want five hundred thousand. i'm thinking oh that sounds pretty good now we want 99 dollars a month like seriously that's a bit of a that's a yeah, bit of a leap it's a huge jump yeah <laughs> uh, but uh right uh so uh touch on a bit out with the you said you know a little low on the experience with D D, but have you do you have you played D D in real life or do you do you play it in real life I have a combined hours of experience of like one hour in person. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> my one of my closest friends in college um, invited me to a session. She was going to be the dungeon master, and we we had all the people together. And she did like a, a practice session with me because it was myself and then a couple of other other friends who were completely new to it. Mm -hmm. um, so I made my character. We played the session. And the it kind of fell through because we got busy with work. But I just remember when I was playing it, I feel so bad looking back on it because now I like have knowledge of what I did. But the character that I created was so not annoying, but he was like the type of character who accidentally derails everything. <laughs> and so, <laughs> like she was trying to give me the main quest to go on, right? But my character, he was like the charlatan type character so he kept flirting with the quest giver and she, she was like if you keep doing this you're not going to get the quest and he was like no it's okay was he a bard by so any I, chance uh no he was a rogue but part of his background i had him specializing in a, a musical instrument so he was like 
He had the Diet spirit bard. of a god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, is it something that you would look at why into now that you've obviously you started getting a bit more experience and would it something that you'd be willing to try out again? Yeah, definitely. Um I've actually this will probably come up in one of the later questions, but I started playing um Baldur's Gate to kind of get some more experience of like how especially like how the combat can work mm -hmm. um so it's it's helped me a lot um with learning how certain rules can be applied um but as for in person mm. or like through discord and stuff, i would think about it i'm a little bit of a shy person <laughs> so I mean that's fine. That you, you'd be amazed at how many different groups there are out there for like people with different levels of experience or confidence and like in playing. And I've I've come across plenty of groups before where you know they're quite happy to take new people on. It's quite okay if you know you're not going to be that much outspoken. And it's it's one of those things that once you've gotten to know the group that you're playing with, you know you've got to know the other players. You get to know the DM over time. You know you start you'll start becoming more confident with yourself and it'd be a bit more outspoken as you, as sort of time goes on and that's, uh. that's one thing i've absolutely loved about just D, &D community in, in general it's just that a lot of people for the most part are very open um they're very uh welcoming you know uh, it's not to say you're not gonna get you're not gonna get a few troublemakers now and then you know you got a few difficult oh, players yeah, and stuff a few difficult dms <laughs> It's gonna happen, it, <laughs> but you you do you eventually can find a really great uh, group. My, I was extremely lucky. The very first group that um, of people that I DM'd for that I'm still DM DMing for him to, uh, to this day, and we've been in a campaign for over a year now, and could not. Oh I, wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. First ever, first ever campaign, completely home brewed, and. Um, it's i've got six players uh there was there was two that unfortunately one had to drop out because his real life work schedule had changed so much that he wasn't going to be able to uh, join in anymore and uh, another who unfortunately just wasn't able to commit but well, that was about six months in so uh, then we had two more that joined and i couldn't ask for a better group of people they're all fantastic and they you know i think two of them at the very least had never played dungeon and dragons before so they were completely brand new to it and now one of them is now running his own campaign uh, yeah. yeah we love the growth yeah it's 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 been absolutely fantastic and again it's just one of those just things like i got very lucky where one of the players happens to be uh he is a bit of a rules lawyer but he's very kind about it he's not one of those just gonna doesn't he's not gonna stop the whole game and be like no it must be done like this he just sort of slips a quiet word in the ears so like he's more like an advisor just like oh by the way crafty uh, do, you, uh, okay. do you realize that you you've you've, you've completely messed up like, uh, have i oh dear oh dear <laughs> <laughs> well it's good that he does it kindly you know i uh, know he's brilliant he's brilliant and if he's listening pete you're the man he's uh he's, he's one of the guys uh that normally comes on this podcast actually like if you ever ever get a chance Ooh. to listen to previous ones he is Pete. He calls himself the rules lawyer, and he is he's uh, a, he's a very nice fella. They all are. They're all brilliant guys. But uh, anyway. yeah, I'll have to go catch him on the backlog. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey. Um, but I am talking way too much about myself. This is all about you. Let us get back to it. No, uh, it should be. It should be about both. You know? <laughs> you're very kind, thank you. <laughs> uh, the audience is probably going, "What the heck, Crafty? Just be quiet. Ask the questions." <laughs> <laughs> and so I shall. So. Possibly being the only female content creator for Presidents Play D and D. Uh, granted, I haven't spoken to every single one, so I don't know uh, the whole ins and outs. Um, but do you feel that it gives you any kind of advantages or disadvantages when it comes to your campaign? Um, in terms of the campaign, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I did tell you like when we were organizing this, and, and I probably I did want to mention this just because like. In this, I was very nervous to openly let everybody know that I'm female, mm. um, just because my audience is, I think it's now 98% men, and I didn't expect that much of a 
a split, I guess. <laughs> um, like I said, all the all the people I know in real life who play D and D are also women. Mm -hmm. So I was expecting it to be pretty evenly split, and then it, oh, surprise, ninety eight percent men. So I was kind of like, uh oh, am I am I supposed to be like a cryptid or something? Uh, <laughs> so, so in terms of that, I I don't think it it gives me any advantages or or disadvantages. Um, it's really just up to how I approach it. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have a lot of D and D experience, but I have a lot of writing experience. Um, so that's how I, that's where I'm coming from in, in my campaign. Okay. Well, I think, again, it's, it's very cool. Uh, I'm just sort of imagining now that in, in the chat, the guys have suddenly devolved to like came and like, Oh, woman. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Say, Oh no, we've broken them. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Well, I had some people in the comments who would be like, hey, man, you know, it's fine. I don't care how people address me, but I was like, oh, don't tell them. <laughs> don't tell them. Uh, like when you when you when you first uh, told me and obviously I'm going to advertise, I'm like, right, I got to be very careful here. I'm not going to out her just yet. I'm going to let her do it herself when she speaks. So I just got to be careful how I phrase these words. <laughs> yeah, I like I worry that people be like too much gender politics in a uh in videos where you know it's supposed to be funny and stuff so i don't care how people refer to me i just was like i was just shocked at how the uh, how split the audience was yeah. uh well <laughs> so you... i said well maybe i'll maybe i'll hide yeah. well as i say you might you might find now that obviously people are gonna know you might find that the you might get some more female viewers because they'll be like oh Okay, it's not just it's not just a sausage fest here. It's like there's some <laughs> there's some girls writing this up. I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. go and show them my Welcome. support. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It. We'll come. We'll come back to this in six months. Like crafty, it was the best thing I ever decided to do. Like I've, I've the split is now sixty forty. It's fantastic. It's, it's either that. Yeah, I mean, I I'm ex I'm excited to bring more people into it. Um, I would love if these videos are uh less of a, a niche genre because i think they can appeal to a pretty a pretty wide audience with the like almost podcast feeling that they have oh yeah definitely uh definitely i had i had a similar so i had a similar discussion with uh, a buddy of mine where we've um you know we've discussed about and i, I brought this up in the last in the last podcast about you know the the initial interest when all these first started coming out and it actually comes to a, a, another video I'll, I'll mention in just a minute um, where there was, you, and you can see this, you can look on all the channels that have been doing it since back in like March. That first initial video, massive number in comparison to the rest of the videos. And like in some cases, it's almost like half the number. Like if I, if I just say, for instance, I'll go from my own to start with. The very first one I did uh, peaked at like 26,000 views which for me at the time I had 50 subscribers so I, I practically oh yeah that would like <laughs> yeah I'd kind of fell off my chair at that point yeah <laughs> and then the next one was like 17,000 so it was already starting to drop and it just kept dropping and dropping and dropping uh, could have been the quality you know might not have been there for everybody but then I saw with the other channels it's the same thing first initial video huge number and then drops but then it everybody's channels balance out so as the videos go on you see this sort of consistency with the number so what my theory is is that the initial video catches the interest because it was the it was a very popular meme going around obviously it's still going but at that time it was still very very new it's oh, it's yes. the presidents. They're doing something funny. They do. They got silly voices, and they can say stuff that you would never hear them say out loud. So it's like that's brilliant. Then those that didn't stick around were because my theory is is that they're not into Dungeons and Dragons. They now are looking for what's the next thing the presidents are going to be doing. Oh, they're playing Call of Duty. Hell yeah, I'm going to go and check that out. <laughs> the ones who stick around <laughs> enjoy the D and D. And they like the yeah, fact that it has I, that I, comedy element still. Yes, I think you're onto something with that. Mm. And so my, yeah. so I think there will, 
uh, and there will obviously be a cons- I think there will be a consistency for as long as people enjoy Dungeons and Dragons, you know. Yes. And hopefully, that mean, only means that it's going to keep increasing. Now, I mentioned a minute ago that there was a video. So, someone today, and I'm going to get their name wrong. So, I'm going to have a quick look up on my channel what because I shared it. Oh, is it the one you posted? Yeah, yeah. Tax, oh, I did, I did watch Rit- it. Yeah. Ritram. And he had made an interesting point about it, uh, about the difference between, you know, the, the lengths of content and stuff. But he was talking about, like, he also mentioned about, like, the decline of the videos. And I think where he's missed the point, missed the bit, is where my theory comes in about it. the initial thing was about, obviously, it being a meme. But he did have some interesting ideas about how to sort of shape it up a little bit. And he went for went about how changing like the personalities like the different characters and stuff coming in and i think that's where ai guy does really well because he does switch his characters around a bit you know he brings in guest characters and so my next question to you was going to be um uh were there other would you be considering adding any of the other presidents to the campaign or any other personalities or maybe like guest ones so without spoiling too much Mm -hmm. i do have a plan to have some other politician voices Mm -hmm. um i i need to think carefully about like the guest voices because we are getting into sort of like copyright things Mm -hmm. um i mean public figures it's it's very different um but because I've I've trying I've been trying to think about how to make these this video style more universal and less just like haha there's the funny presidents doing the thing, mm-hmm. um, yeah of course, of course. Uh, but it's been it's it's been a little bit difficult and it's something I have to kind of think about. But to answer the question, I do have the plan for other voices to be added. It's just in the future future plans okay cool cool that i will i will not press any more on that one um however i do have my next question is would you be able to give us a rundown uh from concept to upload on how you go about making a video sure um so i have roughly the entire campaign mapped in my head um I'll explain more about that in a second. I I have basic events and like the main conflict set up in my head. Um, Just as a writer, that's something that I tend to do because if I don't, I start to wander Mm. (laughs) and then we never get to where we need to go. (laughs) So I have that, that in my head. (laughs) And then for each episode, what I do is I figure out, okay, where are we in this larger outline in my head? It's not a, it's not a specific outline, it's just generalities. And then I kind of pick out um, cross sections of what would make a good video because I try to keep the videos um, not completely self-contained, but have um, a story in their own in each video. So, you know, a conflict um, and a little bit of a resolution, mm-hmm. but set up in a way that it, it contributes to the larger story so i I try to make i guess cross-section is the best term cross sections in the larger story and then from there i um i do a little loose outline of each episode um and then i just sit down and i kind of write it out (laughs) um i have i have mentioned in a couple of my comments because people have asked like are the roles scripted they are not scripted um this why sometimes when they roll like five natural 20s in an episode i'm like are we okay (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but that's not scripted um i also have like hidden roles in the background so to give you an idea of what i mean by that is i like to add a layer of spontaneity to everything because i think it just makes it more interesting um so even if i have an idea of like For example, in one of the episodes, they're traveling from one village to another one. And I had a certain way that I wanted them to go, but I did a couple hidden roles in the background to see if they would take an alternate path. And then I had some stuff set up for that alternate path. 
Um, so yeah, I try to do that just to add a little bit of spontaneity because I think that that forces me to adapt and it adds more interest to the story. Spoken like a true dungeon master. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. No, I really like that idea. I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna make a note of that. Uh, just. Uh... <laughs> it, it really helps with the dungeons too, because like I have my dungeons mapped out, and if you want, I can send you like a picture of what I do. Um, and then prior to the episode, I do the hidden rolls to decide where they go. Um, for example, in one of the dungeons that they went through there was a secret passage so what i did is i weighted the dice differently i rolled like a d6 or something and i said okay if they roll a one they find the secret passage but anything else they don't they didn't find it but that's kind of an example of, of what i do and then i kind of adapt the story from there and i i do the regular rolls and so on oh nice so once you've um you've got your your story written out uh I take it you go down the path and go through a level labs and you you generate the lines about 30,000 times before they sound <laughs> like natural. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do. I try to um I try to kind of roll with the punches with 11 labs. So sometimes they like say a a word in a weird way and I said, "Oh, I'll just keep that in. I think it's kind of funny." Cuz there is something to be said about embracing the strangeness of the AI. <laughs> Uh, you know what? It, that reminded me. So several days ago, I re restarted listening. Uh, so I went for the the four hour one that you put together. Oh and, yes. And um, what was it Barak's character? It's it threw me off at first. I must not have caught it the first time because I just I, I just started laughing because at first I was trying to think like what did he mean by that when he went oh I got two twenty s and I'm like. <laughs> what what does he mean 220 i mean oh, he means 220s it just 11 laps it's just yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> sometimes it does that and i'll say you know i'll just keep it and it's funny <laughs> <laughs> oh dear um so you'll have so we'll have the say we get the audio all done do you lay that out on the editing table and then just add your add your images afterwards. Yes, I um I use Filmora hey, for the videos. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> um, so I put all the audio together, and then I kind of decide, um, okay, what what images, especially now that I started doing the like a, a large image and then two smaller ones. So I'll decide like what does the larger image need to be what's most important in the scene and then what can i add just as like ambient images if mm. you will yeah well it's good you know just having that little bit of visual aspect it's like, it's like you touched upon earlier about you know just that small bit of description and stuff and again like just as a visual aid because i i my my wife has mentioned to me before she can't visualize something you know i could describe it to her but she needs to actually see it to actually know what I'm really seeing. So I saw a picture of her when I when I put stuff together. It's just like, right, visually, I'm putting this together so that, yes. So people like my wife can look at it and go, oh, yeah, it's that. I get it. So having, yeah, that, yeah. having that in your video, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, Having that nice yes. bit of background. And I will say sometimes, too, I occasionally, like, if I know that something is coming up in an episode, like the episode where they fight... Um, the octo mommy um i will pre-generate some of the images because i want to see what the ai comes out with because sometimes the ai like adds elements to it and it like it'll give me a bit of inspiration for things that i could add on to the enemy be that like abilities um or anything so i think that again that added layer of randomness from the ai i don't know it does something special it does i mean for me it it just it never gets the eyes right like like yeah that too my 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 version of of uh trump just i don't know what is going on with his face uh biden's <laughs> one he's got blank eyes uh barack for some reason he has two different colored eyes i it took me i know i just to noticed it. that today yeah and then ben just is straight up waifu material i, I don't know why <laughs> 
I don't know what I did in the prompts with that. I, don't, I really don't remember. I love Swornald, though. His design <laughs> is just so funny. Especially because his head's so tiny. <laughs> it makes me laugh every time I see it. <laughs> there is something to be said that wherever, wherever anyone does an image of Trump, something comes out tiny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would I I was I was very pleased when I saw your one that you had done you'd gone for the barbarian but then you went you went female barbarian and I was just yes. like this is such a nice uh nice twist because no one as far as I can tell has gone for has done has tried to do in some of that what what inspired you to go you know what I'm I'm going to really mess with Trump right now and do this I'm going to give him boobs. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I tried to imagine, okay, I tried to imagine, like, if Ben, hypothetically, ever got together with these guys and said, hey, let's play Dungeons and Dragons. You can make up a character. You can be whatever you want. I think that Trump would go one of two ways. This is just me assuming. I think that he would go the I'm going to be super buff route or he would go the I want to be like the hottest woman I can possibly be <laughs> and also beat everybody up. So that's that's where the inspiration for <laughs> for sorry, it's just funny. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's where Donna came from. I love it. I love it. I've I've I mean, if if you have the chance to make a super hot character, sure. most people will do it. Sure, sure. I'm just waiting now for when someone does it with Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I do love in your in your latest video where you like were referencing all the creators, uh, and you had Trumpy. I would never be a woman. <laughs> I re I tell you, I had so much fun, so much fun doing that. Uh, a little bit the 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 bit i thought i was going to struggle with was having joe going from one to the other where it's somewhat made like sound like it was making sense and on on some level some levels it actually it actually worked in bits you know where you describe this sort of running it's like okay now they're jumping on the ship it's like ah ai guy had a ship ah then they got to a yes. place called dunsmouth <laughs> manifrex did something in dunsmouth <laughs> 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 I also love the line where you said like they met Johnny Depp on a pirate ship. Oh my god, that sent me laughing so hard. <laughs> uh, I, I, I've I've been wanting to do. I did it in the first in my first campaign. I did a couple of little nods to the other creators. I did a I did a bit where Joe uh, was looking at his phone, and he thought he was saying that Ben has been in a car crash. And if you look at the the image, you can see there's the photo of Ben from Clones campaign on <laughs> his phone, and yes. uh, and it was like it was uh, Barack was like, no, that's that that didn't actually happen, Joe. And it just got, it, it sort of spawns in a conversation. It's like, oh, it all looks so real. <laughs> and, then I, <laughs> and then I did it again with um, I did a nod to Relic in when I did the movie version where. Joe had a pet rat, which Trump accident. Well, I say accidentally. He he just he just flat out kills it, and uh, he's all upset by it. And they're like, "What are you getting upset about?" And this is like, "Who who kids attached to rats?" And this is like, "You've clearly never heard of Mister Chips," because there was just such as <laughs> there's such as fan base on. Re I remember seeing it on Relic's fake. Everybody was just always like, "Mister Chips is the goat." It was like, "Really? It's a rat." <laughs> <laughs> Yes, people had a similar reaction to the like crab monster that I introduced. Um, oh. And this is like tangential, but I didn't realize after I made the artifact, the, like the, the cage artifact that captures um, animals or familiars, I went back and I thought about it after a couple of episodes and I was like, this is really broken because like I didn't explain any, um, I, di I didn't put any checks on it. So like, by the way I explained it, you could put like a dragon in it. <laughs> so I had to I had to go back and change that. <laughs> I was like, oh whoops. <laughs> Don't worry. I mean, seriously, everything you keep describing is like, yep, this is these are the makings of a DM in training. Like <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's always there's always gonna be something to overlook. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um it does sort of bring me a little bit into the next question. If you could 
point to something within your own work uh, that you would go, you know what, I would imp- I would look, I would like to improve on that. What would it be, and why? I think it would be the combat, mm-hmm. and the reason is because when I past couple episodes when I thought about it, I haven't really put them in a lot of like group combat situations where they have to deal with crowds Mm. um i've mostly been having them do one-on-one fights so i want to do that not only to get some interest but also because it'll definitely challenge me more to kind of visualize everything that's going on in the fights and make it more i don't know dynamic Mm. um so i want to start doing that i also want to use i Again, I'm going to go back to Baldur's Gate because the <laughs> reason that I started playing it was kind of to study yeah. <laughs> almost. <laughs> um, but I love how so much of the setting is set up. Um, so I'm really trying to learn from that and do a lot more with environment so that they can like jump on items and, and do that sort of stuff. So oh, I'm taking great. notes as I play. <laughs> okay, okay. That sounds pretty cool. Well, I look forward yeah. to seeing what sort of... Uh possible changes that might come into that it's one well, my i know maybe i'll make an maybe you make a what sorry go ahead no, 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 i sorry. said maybe i'll make an army of waifus <laughs> <laughs> right okay before we go any further we gotta talk about this whole waifu thing so where where does this come from like why just... the waifus yes like i i can't even i don't even know how to articulate it's just like where has this <laughs> just why why um <laughs> why um well like i said it, it's kind of like putting my own style onto things it it kind of happened accidentally because as i started generating the art um especially on imagine which is one of the programs that i use hey, same here. um <laughs> yeah a lot of the generations that i liked the most were in the anime section or mm. whatever they're called um so i kind of just kept sticking with that especially the environments i really liked um I don't know, it has this, like, vibrancy to it. Uh, So I kind of just stuck with it and ran with it, especially because the AI would almost, no matter what I would put in it, it would just give me a waifu. So I said, oh, you know what, I'll just roll with it. Especially because, like I said, I like to keep in, like, the AI randomness. Mm. Um, (laughs) So I've kind of made that central to my campaign. Also, though, I do enjoy designing, like, monster girls. I think they're fun. Um... (laughs) But I do plan on adding some husbandos. <laughs> I was going to say, well, until that point, you might only be getting guys then come into your, <laughs> come to your channel. Yeah. This, might, this might explain the ratio. <laughs> yeah, you know, the I can't remember what the number episode is, but it's the episode that, like, Mavana is the main point in the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Um, The click engagement on that was so much higher, so I think I'll just keep with the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, you found the you found the winning formula. <laughs> <laughs> Truly an inspiration to us all. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna have to really play into Ben Shapiro now being the waifu. <laughs> I mean, wait, let me ask you this. If mm? have you like have you seen how Imagine generates his portraits? Because every time I put in his name, it, he turns out really hot. And, like, I don't do it on purpose. It just happens. <laughs> the AI just really loves him. Yeah, so it's really weird. I've got a whole gallery of photos I was trying to get of him when I, when I first started doing this. And a lot of them didn't look like him. They just looked more like generic sort of people. But uh, eventually, uh, the ones that I did have, uh, especially for him as an elf, like, it was it was bizarre what they were trying to do. And they kept trying to make him shirtless for some reason. I'd be like, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty certain whoever owns Imagine's got a thing for Ben Shapiro. Cause, like, it, it didn't, <laughs> that wasn't happening with the others. <laughs> they must, because I think I put in something so generic, like, Ben Shapiro as Dungeon Master and he gave me something he looked like I think they took the word dungeon in, in like a different way um, but 
Also, they always give him these like demonic red eyes. Yes. I don't know what that's about. Yes, exactly. Yes, that's exactly what I've got yeah. on him. It's, it's an elf, and I figured, like, has he been up all night? Has he been smoking something? Like, what? What is with the eyes? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And um, but it was, it was, uh, it was like someone had just commented on on one video. He said about him being a straight up waifu, and I was like, <laughs> okay, I gotta make this a thing now. And now it is. Yeah. It has become a running, a running gag, and it's gonna. Imagine too, like the stealth options that you could do with that. Oh, you wait until my next episode. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I've got some serious plans for it. I'd, so I'm, I'm actually uh, generating new art for the character just for what's happening in the next, in the upcoming episode, and. I was really struggling with Ben's because I was trying to get it to look <laughs> as similar, like at least his facial expression and stuff. So like, I was having to write out, write out what I wanted him looking at. I'd be like, and slightly feminine. And and then I was getting <laughs> some really bizarre stuff coming through afterwards. I was like, okay, so I have to try to change tactics there. Maybe I'll just crop his head off from his original one and stick it on a new body. That might do it. <laughs> Actually, um, speaking of that, when I used to do Donna with like Trump face, um, there were a couple times where I had to Photoshop it where because it just it just would not create Donald Trump as a barbarian woman. So I would have to like get the barbarian woman image and then I would ask for Donald Trump and then I would just Photoshop it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You see, it was fine when I first started doing it. I was getting these pretty cool like uh, images of the, of the of all these characters in like these different poses and stuff, but I could never get them to match like exactly how I wanted it. When I tried going back to the original versions I used for him, every time now I tried looking at getting Trump, it's got him doing this like this really weird face, like like he's constipated or something. It's just it's something really. He yes, he does that. He does that uh especially like the frown. It's almost cartoonish. Um he does that in my generations too. I wonder if because you know like AI gets trained by the users. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we're accidentally training the AI to ask for weird things, especially oh, me asking for Donald Trump as a female barbarian. Yeah, the next, I could just see it now, and like in the months to come, you're like, right, I need Donald Trump, uh, barbarian. I want him leaping in the air with an axe. Uh, why is he wearing a bra? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> it might have been my fault. <laughs> uh, right, uh, my next question is: If someone was be listening now and they wanted to start a President D and D channel. Uh, what advice would you give them? Um, I think my main advice would be to make the content that you want to see. Mm -hmm. So I started making content because I loved Malathorx's videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a bit of like a content void where I had watched all the videos and I was like, I still want to see more. So I said, well, I can't find any more because there's, it's quite a small community. So I said, well, I'll just make them myself then so to everybody who wants to start just make the content that you want to see because if you're enjoying watching it then i'm sure other people will too yeah absolutely solid yeah and you did mention there about watching uh Malifrex. so i take it you've watched you've watched everyone's you've gone through the the list as it were i think so there may be a couple that i that i haven't watched mm. um but I think I pretty much watched everybody's. And I love how everybody has you know, their own twist. You can see nuances in the way that we write each of the presidents. Oh, yeah, definitely. 100%. There is, um, so I think there's eight of us. I might be, I might be one, might be nine uh, that are still ongoing. But they're, at last count, I believe the total number of content creators that. Uh, either are making or have made and now stopped uh, was 25 then i'm definitely missing some people <laughs> <laughs> i'll have to go back and uh, go through the backlog well on if you ever and this also goes for anyone who's listening as well if you ever wanted to see that full list if you go into my community tab you might have to scroll down a bit 
but there is I have put together a list um, every single content creator that I could find that has made or is making President D&D &D. Um, and it it had the very first time I posted I put a link for everybody's first video but I think I got rid of that in my second post and it just lists all their names so you should be able to search their name up and you'll be able to find it but yeah. yeah, you can see like the very first person who posted on YouTube was a uh, if it was like a Saber Wolf. That was the very first person who did it. I don't think he was the first person to ever make President play D and D. I think that's Meme Dice, but I think he was doing it on TikTok before he brought it over onto YouTube. By that point, there'd already been about uh. four or five people who'd already uh, done it by that point. But um. So, uh, President D and D is obviously a very niche genre. Where would you like to see it go, or what would you like to see it evolve into in the in the not too distant future? Uh, I think I would like to see. This is a general statement. I would like to see it. I think that it. Let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I think I would like to see its reputation elevated to more than a meme. Um, I think those of us in the community don't really see it as a meme anymore. It's kind of a different style of telling a story. Mm. Um, but I do think from outside view, like if you just tell someone what the videos are, they're like, oh, that's that dumb meme that <laughs> people were done with <laughs> months ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's one thing. Um I don't know. I think that there is a um what's the word that I'm thinking of? Market? Uh yes, yes. There is a market for it because it, these videos are like somewhere in between um like lives of playing D&D &D and then just podcasts or even like audiobooks as you were saying. Mm. So I don't know. I I think I would like the the audience to get a little bit bigger because i think it, it'll appeal to a lot more people than we think um yeah i don't know it's a hard question <laughs> yeah no I, I i i see where you're going i i would definitely i would love to be able to see that what i would want to see is that there's more variety as as time goes on you know more people get inspired and start uh making their own version and what i would like to eventually see is that you have a whole selection of campaigns you know obviously the, yes. ma the mass majority are doing homebrew um i've, I've gone for a module uh, relic had also gone for a module um and i'm hoping to see more people try to do that go for a module obviously homebrew is fantastic you know because it's obviously completely unique in that regard but the reason why i want to see more modules is because it could be helpful for people who might be looking at you know, oh, that, I, they're looking at D and D books, and it's like, oh, I'd like to. I wonder how this one would play out. Do I want to go and spend the money on it right now? We'll see how it how it does. It, and then they could see someone. They look up online and be like, oh, someone's done a president play D and D version of this, and then they could watch it through. And it doesn't necessarily. One thing is with these modules is that it doesn't have to be played exactly as it plays out in the book. They're more like a guideline. So someone could look through that and go, you know what? That actually sounds really good. I'm actually now going to go and get that module. Um, I was going to say, that might be a good route for, like, um, oh my gosh, uh, what's the word? My brain is just dead today. <laughs> um, collaborations. Like, if we had um, a couple channels doing the same, I think you called it a route, but then, like, each of us have our own spin on it, and... I guess there would have to be agreed upon slices for each episode, but it could be an interesting way to to try doing collaborations. I don't know. That would be very cool. I yeah. I have so on my Discord. Someone I was talking to someone uh, on there about like future projects I did and ideas that I had, and I said, you know, one of them was to have everybody we all work together on a video where everybody ver everybody's version of Trump is sitting around the table <laughs> and they all sort yeah. of interact. I particularly figured of the idea of my my barbarian and your barbarian trying to have a conversation. It just, it, 
<laughs> it'd be the weirdest thing so basically what you're saying is you want all of us to play D D as trump as his character <laughs> oh yeah yeah 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. we could just, just do we could, we could just do like uh, a one shot and split it into segments and then each segment gets uploaded to a different channel so everyone's like okay so uh, if you want to see this you start you start with coco memes then you go to AI guys, then over to clones, then the crafty GGs, and you finish at Malifux. <laughs> <You know? laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. I kind of like that. Mm. Oh, man. Well, hopefully, if I get enough, if I can get all of them on here at some point or another, I might be able to spin the idea to the lot of them. And who knows, in a year's time, we could be like, ultimate president D&D collaboration. Way. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh... Uh, I like that. I like that. I'll have to. I have to uh, wait and see if we can rope other people into doing it. <laughs> uh, oh, let me see. Um, I think that might be all of my questions. Uh, ah, no, I've got one more. So, obviously, you're currently in the middle of a D and D campaign. But are there any future projects that you're thinking of maybe taking? Uh, like stepping into maybe a different type of tabletop RPG or just any other sort of projects that you might want to expand out to anything that you could possibly give any details if not no biggie just kind of give mm -hmm. something uh, the viewers a little bit of a taste of what might be to come um I'm not opposed to trying out for systems but I think just to keep oh. my brain in check, <laughs> I have to focus on this one campaign because if I don't, I will run rampant. Um, and honestly, the campaign that I have planned out, I think that there's enough variety upcoming that it will kind of feel very different once we get to a couple different sections. Um, but oh. yeah, so to answer the question, I'm open to it. I just have to focus right now because if I don't... I think I'll get sidetracked and I'm <laughs> I'm afraid of what'll happen if I get too sidetracked. <laughs> no, fair enough, fair enough. Well that is um that is gonna answer all of my questions. So now we're gonna move over to questions from the audience. Now obviously there while well, this premiere is going on, we're more than likely gonna have people asking us additional questions. So everybody hold your questions for a moment. Let's hear what we've got to go through on here first. Then you might find that your questions uh, haven't been asked yet and so then feel free then to drop a question down below I'm sure uh, myself and Coco Mimi will be there during the premiere so we'll be able to answer all, any any additional that you've got but in the yes, meantime I will do my best <laughs> in the meantime we have uh, Orb Server I know Manifrex inspired you but what made what sorry but what gave you the idea to start doing it what was the courage slash spark to start making your series and start writing and posting? P.S. Love how you made Joe on your series with his quick mind and ideas. What inspired you to make him like that? So we've got a few questions there. So if you want to take time on those ones. Okay. So the first part of that, um, I think that's a great question because it's really down to like the blank page syndrome of um, like when you start on a project, I think the hardest part is to actually start. I guess what gave me the spark was I really wanted more content like this and I couldn't find it. So I said, oh, I'll just do it myself. And what I did was I didn't swear myself to a whole campaign first. Um, I said, okay, I'll try making one episode. And if I like doing it, I'll keep doing it. So my first episode's pretty like well contained. Um, you know, they arrive in this new place, they get a request to do, they do the request, they come back. It's pretty contained. Um, so instead of trying to say like I'll create a whole channel of D and D content, I said I'll just create one video, <laughs> and I'll start there. Okay. Oh, the Joe question too. So wait, can you repeat the Joe part? Yes, of course. Love how you made Joe on your series with his quick mind and ideas. What inspired you to make him like that? Um, so one of the things that I thought about when I was writing is 
I mean, we're basically treating the presidents as like characters in their own right. So I was thinking a lot about the group dynamic and, um, you know, Trump is the one who really like pushes things forward. Um, mm -hmm. He's quite aggressive. And then Obama is pretty even handed. He's almost too cautious sometimes. So I kind of poked fun at him like that. For Joe, I've seen a lot of people play on the like he forgets everything. And that is funny. It is. Um, but I kind of wanted to to do that almost like fourth wall breaking kind of what clone does but like toned down and i combine it with this idea of like he keeps going on tangents and um the others don't think the tangents are related and they seem like not related at all but they happen to do be related in, in the campaign later on because uh, i think that's just super funny uh, mm -hmm. is them constantly sort of dismissing him and then him accidentally uncovering things about the campaign <laughs> I think that's quite funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, we, I've got six questions from Tex Rex. Uh, he said, his first one is, do you have a lot of fun making your waifu character and monster art? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I love making them. Uh, <laughs> I think the the main thing that I think about when I do them is I say, what have I not done yet? And what could I do? You know, so like I, I in one of the latest episodes, I said, oh, I haven't done a cat girl. How could I not have done that yet? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Are you an anime watcher? Yes, I am. Uh, I don't think he's listed um, it, but what's your favorite? What's your favorite anime? Oh, it's so hard to point to like a favorite. I'm really into the isekai genre that's pretty popular right now. It's almost overdone at this point, but it's really fun to watch people's um different takes on it. I think of those, my favorite is the that time I got reincarnated as a slime. Um overall, I think my favorite anime ever would be Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Mm. There's more that I can't think of, but yeah. <laughs> Ex oh, very nice. Uh, I, I'm not. Uh, I'm not very well versed in anime. There's a few that I grew up watching. Um, Dragon Ball Z, for instance. Um, I oh yes, very, yeah. very much got into it's One classic. Piece. Um, obviously, Pokemon. As a kid, you know that was you know, 1997. That was that was my life. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I grew up on Pokemon and Sailor Moon and Hamtaro. Oh yeah. I'm <laughs> Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as years went on, though, I did watch a few more. Uh, there was a few others that I, I quite liked. Uh, One Piece, for instance, and um, Attack on Titan. I really enjoyed that. Yes, Still I need to catch it. up on that. I say I haven't finished it yet. I know, I know it's it's meant to be finished now. I believe. I think they did the final. The yeah, final I think season. so. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I never got into One Piece because the length just scares me. <laughs> there is you so. <laughs> Because I restarted watching because I watched Netflix's live version, live adaptation of it, live action rather, um, absolutely brilliant. The it's is really good. It's very um, faithful to the source material, which is oh, which is okay. the, is the least you can ask for if someone's going to do a live action version of an anime. Right. Um, and it made me want to start rewatching the original, but I found, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a website called One Pace. And what they do is they actually take out all the filler episodes. So you can <laughs> well, watch. Well, it's perfect. <laughs> it works for me because I've, I've already got so much going on. I, I just <laughs> I, I just want to get the, to the good bits. <laughs> yeah, that's so perfect. Wow. Okay. I'll have to take a look at that then. Okay. Uh, what other hobbies do you have? And do any of them help inspire... Uh, help or inspire your AI stuff? Um, I do write a lot, but that's not really a hobby because it's kind of like partially what I do for my job. Mm -hmm. um, I do draw a bit. I'm not very good. I like to paint more. I paint more with um, gouache, which if people don't know what that is, it's kind of like a mix between acrylics and watercolor. Um, and I also like to garden. <laughs> Oh, sound yeah. like an old grandma hey i got it um I love it. but <laughs> yay do you do um i do vegetable gardens yep 
Yep. Yeah. Cucumbers, potatoes, um, chilies. I do the lot. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, I I think though that 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 has kind of bled into my campaign because when I was choosing a the main setting, I said, "Oh, I want to do something tropical because there's so much opportunity in like rainforests. There's so many animals, plants. Um, so I think that's kind of my little outside hobby did did give me a little push there. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Um, where did you get the voice for Mavana? Is it just a random default British voice you were able to choose, or did you find it somewhere else? It really stands out, and I haven't heard it before. It is one of the default voices. I don't remember the name of it on Eleven Labs. Um, I do remember I, I played just about every single voice, trying to <laughs> trying to decide who would, uh, which would voice her. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, you're new to D and D. But do you play any other role playing games? Um, I mean, I play video games, but I haven't played any like tabletop games. Hmm. Um, well, what but about... I've gotten really interested in it. Well, as I say, you you mentioned Baldur's Gate three, but uh, what about other video game uh, RPGs like um, Final Fantasy? Um, for instance? Oh, I played Final Fantasy as a kid. I haven't played in a long time. Um. I've got, well, <laughs> I'm going to sound really basic. Um, I played a lot of Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. I played a lot of uh, Pokemon. I'm trying to think of all the different RPGs. There's so many. Oh, I yeah. played a lot of Skyrim. <laughs> a lot of Skyrim. Like an embarrassing amount. <laughs> uh, oh, God. What are the ones? Because it's such a huge genre. Uh, I can't think of any more. I'll probably think of more as time goes on, but... I tend to have this bad habit where, like, I, I'll find a video game and I, like, stick to it and I play it, play it, play it forever. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just kind of forget about it when the next one comes. Well, right now that's Baldur's Gate, so, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I started that. Uh, and the final question from Tex Rex: do you read a lot? What draws you to fantasy stuff? I do read a lot. Um, I've been into fantasy since I was a little kid. Um, I think my very first fantasy book that I ever read was the Aragon series. I don't know if it's a trilogy or a series. I think it's a series. Uh, looking back, I reread it and I was like, I have the nostalgia when reading it, but I was like, mm, this is like Lord of the Rings, <laughs> but the same thing. Um, yeah, so I, I've read like classic uh, fantasy stuff. When I was doing um, studies in English literature, I had to read The Fairy Queen, which was like, the OG high fantasy and it was I really liked it um right now I'm into reading a lot of J novels because uh with work and stuff I like how what's the word you can consume them pretty quickly um mm. so like I don't get pulled into like an 800 page book because <laughs> <laughs> if I do that I will read and I will not stop um so the one that I've been reading is the Ascendance of a Bookworm um, series. The Japanese title is Honzuki no Gekukujo. Um, it's an isekai, but it's it very much has like uh, Norse and, and like Germanic mythology in it. It's very interesting. Mm. Uh, I would recommend people to read it because when I say like J novels or light novels, I think people have a certain perception of them but um i don't know this series it is is giving me quite a few ideas especially um its magic system is really interesting so all right yeah <laughs> oh excellent uh right that's from tex rex next one now i'm gonna feel really bad if i don't pronounce this correctly because this fella has been i think following me since i very first started and i know he's he's on nearly everyone else's channels I think actually most of the people that are reading that are people that are generally like, they seem to be like the go-to fans of this genre. So I do apologize, sir, if I get your name incorrect here. Gia Como Sorbi. He will definitely correct me if I've got that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think I recognize, I think I love him, but yeah, I think I recognize the name. Uh, so he has three questions. Uh, your major sources of inspiration do you roll or predetermine 
results and plot events do you know how this story is going to end or make it up as it goes okay I'll take them one at a time yeah uh first one inspiration i had to think about this a lot because i don't consciously pull inspiration from certain things like certainly i have the basis for high fantasy right it's kind of like a genre of itself and mm -hmm. there's lots of conventions built into that but i think what my specific inspiration comes down to is that i'm very inspired by setting visuals um so what i mean by that is we talked earlier about choosing the setting for the campaign being a rainforest or like a tropical setting and the reason is because it's such a lush and vibrant atmosphere that i can do so much with it with the monsters and um, the culture and stuff and so what I do when I think of settings um, is um, I almost think of the setting and then I kind of backtrack so uh, okay I'll take I'll, I'll do an example the example is um, the latest town that my campaign is in which is Saltwish um, I said okay I want to create a town it's a port town and the main inhabitants are like a merfolk sort of species or like sea elf and then i was like okay why is this the main species and that's why i had to backtrack i said okay well maybe um they it's sort of like a hybrid between merfolk and humans okay so then i had to backtrack again how did that come to pass and then that's how i build up a lot of like the lore and ideas is i just keep backtracking to decide like why does something happen or how did this history come to pass when i have certain ideas nice yeah and uh the second question was do you roll or oh, yeah. predetermine results and plot events i do roll mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've, yeah, we've we talked about that yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then i have my my background rolls um that are hidden Yep, yep, I've, uh, I've got that written down. Definitely not going to steal that idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, it helps because I remember the first dungeon, I guess this is kind of a spoiler, but there's a part where basically Trump runs ahead. And when I was doing the rolls for this, I had pre-planned out the dungeon. And I was like, oh God, he's running into one room that I didn't think that they would run into. So I said, okay, narratively, I have to explain why this happens. Um, so I kind of forced made that fit in uh yeah but <laughs> everything uh <laughs> everything's up to the dice i try to keep in the spontaneity oh yeah no it's the best way to be and um so his final question was do you know how this story is going to end or do you make it up as it goes along broad strokes i know how it's gonna end right. finer details we will kind of take it how the dice roll <laughs> uh, oh, we've got another one here from Observer. Are you planning to make videos with the AI president in other TTRPGs, for example, other tabletop games? Uh, so, thinking things like, you know, like Malifrex does Call of Cthulhu. Yes. Yeah, I love those videos. Um, I would do it. I think that I would have to wait till this campaign is over. Because, mm -hmm. like I said, I think if I get distracted, I'll just be. We're going to derail the whole train. Yeah, no, of <laughs> um, course. Also, I think I have a lot still to learn about D&D, &D, so I think I would wait until I'm more comfortable with this system. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Shogun Plasma has three questions. I would like to ask about your writing process and how you come up with your episodes. As someone who has an interest in potentially making AI D&D &D videos in the future, or just for DM and regular session with people one day, it would help me greatly. I have massive anxiety issues and I often don't know where to start and how far I should take the scope. So, I kind of touched on this earlier. I think like when you start out, it's a good idea to keep the scope pretty small, especially for like the first couple episodes, you know, keep them contained have a specific objective for them to do instead of thinking about the whole campaign first um in terms of like my writing process with the entire campaign 
like I said earlier, I have a general idea of the entire conflict that's going on. And I kind of um, pre-plan the history of what's going on around them. And then from there, I decide how they should navigate the landscape to mm. best tell the story. But beyond that, I, I let the dice decide everything. Um, yeah, so I, I plan out broad strokes ahead of time, but I know a lot of people, Just this is just writing advice, I know a lot of people can't write that way and they just prefer to just sit down and like write mm -hmm. and then edit afterwards. So it really depends on your style. You can be a pre-planner or you can be a, you know, let's just go. Yeah, no, fair enough. A uh, second question is, do you have an idea on how far in level the players will go before the end of the campaign? I know a lot of DMs avoid going very high, especially around level 16 to 20. Uh, so when I was learning about D&D, I was first of all shocked that like 20 is like the cap. Oh, yeah. That was very strange to me. <laughs> um. <laughs> I will say, I think because I have so little D&D experience, I'm not afraid to just do crazy things. Like, if I get them too high a level, for example, and I decide to keep continuing them in this world, um, I'll just de-level them. <laughs> I have no, I have no qualms about that. <laughs> oh, I, I could just, I just feel, I could just feel a hundred, uh, dear. Dungeon and Dragon players right now just sort of go clenching. It's like, what do you mean de-level them? <laughs> i have no fear what's this one comment that i got uh, that i keep thinking about where i ask people to tell me their favorite um D, D monster and somebody's comment said my favorite D, D monster is the dungeon master oh yeah and i was like yep <laughs> yeah that's, <laughs> that's that me i'm not afraid <laughs> i'm not afraid to do that to them um, oh my goodness i would very much be afraid if you were my dungeon master oh my goodness <laughs> I, I, like, well, I, would, I, I like my extra attack. Don't take it away. <laughs> I wouldn't do it to real people, of course. You know, these are just characters. <laughs> um, so I can I can manipulate them as like the god behind the veil. Um, to answer the question more concretely, though, I don't know. I think for this campaign, um, the leveling is going to slow down considerably. I don't think they would end up more than level 10. Mm -hmm. but that's no indication of how far we are in the campaign okay so yeah good yeah. response uh the final question would you be interested in potentially branching out to the presidents one day after their campaign sorry hold on let me just re reread that one would you be interested in potentially branching out of the presidents one day after their campaign is over i so like I think he means. I think if you if you're listening at the moment, Shogun, hopefully you can maybe give us a clarification of what exactly you mean by that one. I should have read that one over and probably replied to you at the time. But I think it probably means past the president, so wouldn't be using the presidents anymore. Maybe go into other personalities. But I guess we sort of touched upon that earlier when you were saying about potential copyright. You know, if you're using public figures, it's it's one thing. But yeah. Um... I don't know. I would love to kind of create my own fictional players. Um, but I think there's something about having these presidents who are basically characters, for lack of a better term. Um, it's so easy because we all kind of understand how they operate. And then it's kind of easy to see how the dynamic is going to work. So it would be different if I used original characters. Mm. But I'm not opposed to it. I'm open to, to doing anything. Like I've said, I will de-level them. I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Still trying to get my head around that. <laughs> I will <laughs> I will create havoc. Like <laughs> Um Right, our next one is from Gosu Gosu Tus I'm really sorry, people. Well, if I, thank you. I, I That's my that's my that's my bestie. <laughs> oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah. Welcome, She's bestie. very supportive. <laughs> yeah. Well, their question is, uh, what are the inspirations behind the different monsters, big bads, and NPCs? They're all so creative. I'd like to know where the concepts come from. 
so the monsters um i think of like the setting and i and i try to think of animals plants creatures in general that would be um inhabitants of the setting so when we got to Saltwish, it's a port town everything's kind of underwater themed so the monsters are underwater themed makes sense um in terms in terms of like npcs i'm really trying to create a very colorful world and um so i've i've tried to just naturally think of like if we created a town you know what are the necessary people within that town you have taverns blacksmiths that sort of thing and then i just try to create them as characters in their own right um and give them their little quirks and mm -hmm. and um and that sort of thing yeah yeah very nice uh oh observer's back he's got more questions uh do you repeat the use of spells like barak's burning hand and that druid lady with repel uh, with repeat use of ice knife because it's easier to use the same dialogue instead of working for the new ai voice needed to say the spells when used or are you cheap in using new spells um so i go with um the character stuff on D, &D beyond um and so, like, I use the character creators on there, and I pretty much just give them the spells that are available there. I think I could probably, like, switch them up more. The secondary answer to this is that um, I'm really experimenting with this idea of adding elemental reactions to the combat, which I don't think is in D&D &D 5e. Like, okay, for example, <laughs> um, I play Genshin Impact, and one of the key parts of the combat in that game is elemental reactions mm -hmm. so like if somebody is covered in water and then you do a fire attack at them it does extra damage and i think that's a very intuitive combat design and i kind of want to implement it but i haven't decided like how to do it yet so i'm tr <laughs> i'm trying to be a little bit conservative with the spells until i figure out how, if or how i would implement that so you could um you could obviously use the environment to its advantage being the dm this is one of the beautiful things about being a dungeon master it is entirely down to you <clears throat> excuse me how you want to uh use the rules whether that includes bending them breaking them or outright adding your own so yes, as it is I a am god yes. exactly effectively <laughs> yes in this world so when it comes to uh, home especially when it's homebrew you know you can implement that not a problem like you say you don't got someone who's covered in water and say uh, your wizard happens to have uh, a lightning based uh, attack maybe it does additional because the fact that water is being used you know if you want to yes. add that sort of stuff in there it's not a problem the only thing you're going to get from people is oh this wasn't mentioned at the beginning of the campaign so they're just not aware that it's now a thing but once you've un once you've introduced yeah. it, people now know. Then going forward, that ah yes, this is going to happen, which can add adds more layers to it. Really, when you think, but you know, different yes, environments. Yes, yeah. I was going to say, um, one of the things I like to do when I add stuff like that um, <laughs> is I like to blame it on the characters. <laughs> <laughs> that makes it fun. So whenever people are like, "Oh, you made a mistake here," I mean, I don't take it personally. I just say, "Ha ha, Ben made a mistake." <laughs> I, I use I use my my Ben to um, be the voice of the the viewers that come back with uh, any kind of criticism or feedback. He'll be like, "Oh right, okay, yes. he's he is the rules lawyer, so it's now his job to bring that up in the next episode." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like it's the, a great way to yeah to like um, fix the include um, include the audience yeah, yeah. and fix the mistakes. Yes, yeah. I, I yeah, give you an example. The very very first like session one episode not including the session zero but the session one they get to the town and i describe the dragon and i make a mistake in the description i mention the fact that it's blue and then i say that it's spitting fire and then someone quite rightly pointed out he said uh, blue dragons they shoot lightning not fire and I'm like ah straight away <laughs> <laughs> i was like this is a perfect opportunity to bring the rules lawyer in <laughs> yeah that's your special dragon exactly um 
I do that too with the like the beginnings of the episodes. Especially, I remember there was like um, when I was designing the characters, I was very new to the rules, so I didn't realize that barbarians usually don't wear armor. So mm. I gave Donna armor, and people are like, "Oh, you know, they don't usually wear armor." And I looked and I saw the passives, and I said, "Oh, okay." Um, <laughs> but then narratively, I just made it so like. Of course, Trump would be like, I don't care about the rules. I'm going to put armor on my character because that's what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then so they, you have the opportunity for them all to kind of fight over it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got another question from Observer. How do you make your homebrew monsters? Are they fitted with rules for 5e? Are they balanced? So I think we've already had a bit of explanation uh, from yourself in regards to your monsters on there but so i think the thing more he's looking for then is are they fitted with rules of 5e and are they balanced so what i usually do is i go to i don't know what it's called on the website but i go to like the encounter creator and i'll usually look at comparable monsters to the one that i'm working with mm-hmm. and i try to base off sort of like the monsters that are already created. Um, I use those as a baseline for my monster. That way I'm not deviating too far from <laughs> yeah. from what people are used to. And you, you effectively you reskin them. Yes, yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. No, no, it's a it's it's a good it's a good tactic. I've I've used it in my own um my real life uh D and D games. Like I'll take I'll take uh, certain things maybe 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 not so much with like monsters but I'll definitely do it with like weapons for instance uh, I'll have like some sort of fancy looking sort of weapon and I'll just I'll reskin it from like <laughs> let's say like a, a long sword or something like that yeah perfect right yeah. it's already you know don't fix it it's not broken yeah um, right another one from Observer what is your favorite president in the D and D series warrior woman uh, Donna, intelligent, inter, sorry, intelligent stoic Barack, or the chosen Prince Joe. Oh, it's so hard. <laughs> um, it's got to be. Donna. First of all, I'm shocked. So many people love Donna. I do like her. Um, she's very fun to write. I think, in terms of like utility in the campaign, I really like joe's character benjen because not only he's really funny to throw in like the um real world stuff break the fourth wall Mm -hmm. but i find that a lot of his skills um helps get through situations where if i'm in a bind like i put myself in in (laughs) in a situation like i'm not sure how i'm gonna write them out of this Mm. um i'll always go to joe's kind of character sheet and take a look at all his stuff and usually i can figure something out from there so he's been like the surprise character i guess (laughs) that's very good well i mean if i had to pick uh yeah i'm gonna have to go with donna because it's just it's just something about her character that it just (laughs) this is like Oh, it's just it's the fact that it's Trump's personality behind it as well. It just it, it's just a beautiful combination. <laughs> um, we have one here from Short Stack Aficionado. I don't know if I said that right. I do apologise, people, if I get your pronunciation wrong. Some some people you, you, it can't just be like Bob, you know, or Caroline. <laughs> has has to be something. Ah, anyway, have you considered ever looking into other TTRPG systems for future series? I think, again, we've already touched upon this. Yeah, definitely. Um, that's a short answer. <laughs> Probably once I get once I get more comfortable with D&D and I get closer to the end of this campaign, I think I will branch out, maybe. Yeah. Uh, one more from Observer. Uh, how new are you? In D&D since I noticed quite a lot of small mistakes made here and there in the series. I'm a rules lawyer and uh, you know how it is but I still enjoy the series. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, I don't mind the the rule lawyers because it, it helps me learn, right? I try mm. to stay teachable. Um, yeah, I have a 
experience of about one hour. <laughs> Although I started playing Baldur's Gate and I've been playing for like 12 hours. So, well, I mean, there you go. You, you, you <laughs> got, the hours have already been building up. Perfect. <laughs> Honestly, I started playing it because I was like, oh, I'll take notes. I'll learn. Right. And then mm -hmm. I stayed because um, I love the characters in it and the, the environment's so beautiful. And um, Astarian lives rent free in my head. <laughs> So, yeah. <laughs> uh, next one is Drill Ablo. What is your favorite TTRPG and why? I don't have any experience with other ones, so I can't really answer this. Oh, well, of course you can. Um, it's Dungeons and Dragons because yeah, for the reason you just said. I, <laughs> I'm also. I also was really interested in in um, Malathrex's like the Call of Cthulhu um, system. Mm. I probably will take a look at that once I get more comfortable with D&D. I did like how kind of different it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm very limited on, on tabletops. Uh, honestly, if it wasn't for Malifre Malifrex, um, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gone. I wouldn't have known much about Call of Cthulhu. I have had a very small experience playing it, um, but I learned a lot more from watching his uh, campaign and i found out about one called yeah. root which i'd never heard of either i don't know if you've seen that yeah. have you seen that episode he's done R R root uh little animal characters oh yes 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 yeah, yes yeah, yeah. with the little with the little animal with the i love the art in that way um, um yeah i do enjoy that one um I don't know which ones I like better. I think I like the Call of Cthulhu just because the content matter, like the Lovecraftian horror, was so different. Mm. Um, that it was kind of like a, I don't know, it was very refreshing to see uh, a different style of story in the tabletop medium, kind of. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have one here from James Meow. Ask if they will add more characters as they gain experience in D&D, &D, like George Bush, Bill Clinton, etc. Uh, yeah, without getting into spoilers, more is coming. Yeah. More, more people are coming. More are coming. <laughs> uh, we have another one here from... I'm oh, sorry. We have one here from a Mandalorian. Is this story pre-written or improvised? Which I think we've already touched upon how this this all goes about. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think we've answered that. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and I think they've asked a similar question to what James Meow was just saying. Are there any guests considered or planned, such as George Bush, George Rog uh, Joe Rogan, Hillary Clinton, or Bill Clinton? Again, can't go into spoilers. <laughs> I will say something that's not a spoiler. I had the thought. Well, I have. I want to include your wives. <laughs> as bosses that they have to fight um so i'd love to hear people's ideas for like what i should make them into um i think that should be a really funny concept <laughs> uh, i've got one here for lol man dude my question is why is donald's character a woman donna may be a godly woman warrior but i want to know how you came up with it um yeah, so um, I touched on the whole thing of like I imagine if he were to create like this fantasy character, he'd always he would either be this huge buff dude or like he wouldn't be like the soup like the hottest woman ever. Um, so th there's that, but also like there's this great irony about it about the things that he says that if you just change him to a woman, it sounds so different. Um, and I just, I love that irony. It's so good for comedy. <laughs> uh, we have, oh, we have a few more here now from James Meow. Uh, I think one or two of these have already been asked before, so I'm just going to have a quick look. Um, so one's about doing another campaign with alternate voices, but again, sort of gone into, we've, I think, I believe we've already covered that. Uh, will yes. you look at adding a battle map with icons on your videos? It is something I've considered. Um, watching your videos, um, it seems like so much work, right? Getting like all the animations and stuff. The the animation, 
I, I tell you, because Malafrex was mentioning this as well, and I think at the time I misunderstood. I, I thought he was referring to my original uh, campaign more than what he was saying about the, 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 the current one. Um, I think my PC is starting to feel its age because uh, okay. <laughs> the animation, um, it's not a lot of animation, but I think where the problem is is that there's an awful lot of layers so just by uh, having just a few movements and such does seem to be stressing my PC out a bit. So what I end up having to do is do it in parts. So I'll have all the audio done first. I try to pace it out as best as I can. When I'm listening, right, when I'm listening to it, it, it sounds like the pacing's fine. Once the video's done and it's uploaded and I sit there and I watch it with my wife, like, because I always want to get her feedback. I suddenly realised the pacing sounds awful, <laughs> but uh, uh. anyway, um, I get all the audio out. Then I get the backgrounds. I work out obviously if there's going to be combat in a certain area, but then I'll do it all in layers. So I'll start off with the maybe it'll be the the text dialogue for like the certain actions that are going to be taken, um, and then once I've got like a particular part of that done, I'll export the whole video. And so then it starts, so when I bring that in, that's just one layer. And then I add more to it. So every time I've done a particular part and I've added several pieces that I know don't need to be moved around afterwards, and I know don't need, there won't be any worry about anything overlapping, then I will uh, re-export it again. And then I'll just keep building up from that. Because if I don't, what ends up happening is that I've got about 15 layers and the computer starts slowing down. Oh, I see, I see. <laughs> so trying to animate something that should only take 10 seconds ends up taking 10 minutes because the computer can't uh. keep up with it. I think I think I need to upgrade like one bit. I, my PC was, was custom built by a friend of mine about six years ago. Uh. He said it will last. Okay, oh, it's a... Well, he said it will last absolutely fine for five years. He said you need to change one part after that and it will run up for another five years, no problem. Now it's been six and I haven't seen him. <laughs> so, I, I see. so I need to get back into that. And I, I can probably do a little bit more with animation, but at the moment I, I purposely try to keep it basic. But it also so it helps that I can do more to the story and add more into it, you know. But uh, battle maps, they're actually surprisingly easy. Once once you've got the yeah. once you've got the idea behind it and if you want any help or anything with like just getting the initial setup, I'm quite happy I'm quite happy to meet up with you one evening and go through it. I'll just show you what I how I do it and if it then that way then should help you just get on the right. But again, it, it is so straightforward. It really is. Yeah. I'll definitely consider it. That actually reminds me of another RPG that I played that I forgot to mention, but I played a lot of Fire Emblem. Um, oh yeah, I played a bit <laughs> and of that. That's have, good. Like, the, the grid maps. So but yeah, I, I think I would consider adding the maps. I may start doing it just for the dungeons to see mm -hmm. how it goes. Um, because I already generate those, so it, it wouldn't really be that much more to just include it in the video. Um I would want to know from the viewers, though, this is just a question for feedback, um, when I create the dungeons, like, I have my master copy that shows where all the traps are and all the treasure chests, so I would want to know if the readers want to know that, or not the readers, my goodness, the viewers, <laughs> if the viewers want to know that information, or if they would want to see it just, like, as the party discovers it, um... I would be interested oh, to know that. That's a that's a pretty good question. Well, viewers, you've heard it. You've heard the question. Post those answers down below. Let us know what you want to see. Uh, right, going back to James Meow. Uh, what is your favourite race, class, and subclass to play in D&D? &D? Now, considering you've had one <laughs> hour of real-life experience and 12 hours of Baldur's Gate, I imagine it's going to be quite limited. Um, well, I, I can kind of answer. So when I played in person that one hour, um, I played a human just to, to keep it simple, but uh, he was a rogue. And then normally when I play RPGs, I usually gravitate towards like archer characters. Mm -hmm. um, so like a ranger or a rogue. Oh, yeah. um, but I actually discovered in D&D &D that I like the magic system a lot more than I do in games like Skyrim. Um, 
so I really prefer playing magic caster so in Baldur's Gate I started playing as a druid and I played like an hour and I didn't vibe with it <laughs> um it, it, it was fine I just like I didn't vibe with the style that was required of like a lot of the spells so I switched to a sorcerer um and I've been playing as a half elf sorcerer and I really I like that class um nice yeah nice <laughs> Um, they also asked what other TTRPGs do you like, but we've we've already got that that one sorted. So the next question is, what are your thoughts on D and D five point five edition? Oh goodness! See, I barely have a hold on fifth edition. <laughs> now there's more. <laughs> oh yeah, there, there's always going to be more. <laughs> My thoughts are, oh, I need to go read a handbook again. <laughs> yes. Um, what fantasy books, series, films, etc., do you like and draw inspiration from? Um, so we've talked about some of them. Mm -hmm. I forgot to mention, um, I am a big fan of the Song of Ice and Fire series. Um, oh, yeah. I have a bit of beef with the TV show. Oh, but I won't get yeah. into that because. <laughs> oh no! Please, please it... get into it. I well, actually know because we'll probably end up talking for another couple of hours. Uh, yeah, oh, I... it makes me so depressed. To think about it. Um, I'm yeah, so I'm invested still... into that show. <laughs> I'm waiting for Winds of Winter. I don't know if we'll ever get it. Do you think we'll get it? Oh well, I'll be long dead by the time it actually comes out. Somehow George R. R. Martin will still be alive in sixty years, and he still won't have done it. <laughs> They're coming. Oh. It's it, the book is coming. I swear. <laughs> I know. I have. Um, that's why I haven't played. Oh my god, this is a brain fart. What's the game that he uh, helped write? Oh, similar to Dark Souls. I don't know. I didn't know yet. Yet any I involvement? Forget. Oh in my game. god! I need to Google this. It's gonna bother me. Um, <laughs> game. <laughs> George R. R. Martin helped. Right, it's super popular. Elden Ring. Oh my god. Sorry. Oh really? He helped he write helped, it. Yeah. How? But that game. That game came out. That game's been released. How? I did, know. What? I have. That's why I have beef with it because, <laughs> look, I get it. Okay, as writers, we get writer's block. My problem is that he keeps saying we're gonna get the winds of winter, and then he works on other stuff, and I'm like, bruh, please, <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying for a new book. So this is why I I haven't yeah. even touched the books because there yeah, I just I wouldn't be able to I I, I just it would frustrate me, frustrate me too much. I grew up it's, on yeah. on Harry Potter and then having to wait a year between uh, the the next release as a kid like that was driving me insane. <laughs> like, was... Yes, yeah. I also I also grew up on Harry Potter, so that being completed, I'm like, oh, I can rest. But then I found a new series, and now I'm like, no rest. <laughs> Uh, what would you recommend for learning how to be a player or dungeon master? Well, you're asking someone with limited experience. Um, <laughs> I would say this is good life advice that I learned, but just stay teachable. Um, because you can always learn stuff from other people, other players, especially if they're more experienced. Um yeah, I personally, when I started, I, I read all the handbooks I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. um, and I have a my friend who plays D&D. When I would want to make some like controversial decisions, um, including for some of the things that's coming up, um, I would kind of run it past her and I'd be like, is this breaking the rules too much? <laughs> because I don't, I don't really care if I break them a little bit, mm. but I don't want to utterly destroy the game you know so yeah you know i do i do similar with uh the one i mentioned earlier pete the rules lawyer there have been times yes. when i'm in a combat and i, I say to him, I was like pete just uh, just double check uh what what happens if i do this do, <laughs> am i gonna make people mad he's like yes you will but at least they're in the rules so it's oh good good all right and he's one of your players too so it must be hard like hiding <laughs> hiding some things from him Oh, it can be. It can be, but um, thankfully, 
like we over time like over the last year i've been able to at least get answers without revealing what it is that i'm trying to do like i'll ask like 17 questions and only one of them is actually relevant <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> but but bless him he he will answer every single one without without delay and he'll go into like a five minute detail about it it's just like god man i love that that, that man <laughs> <laughs> Thank you uh, if you're listening. <laughs> um, but I, my, if James Meow, if you're if you're interested, the best way I found to learn how to be a play uh, to be a player on Dungeon Master is by doing that. For me, that that was that was how I did it. I before I I DM'd my first session, I uh, played with a fellow YouTuber. We used to do like collaborations and stuff, and uh, he wanted he he was the one who introduced me to Dungeon Dragons. And so this was doing it outside of YouTube. Uh, I never, I never had a single bit of experience. I all I knew about Dungeons and Dragons is that it was called Dungeons and Dragons. That that was it. And mm. he introduced it uh, to me, and we played, me, him, and several others. And we played for like six months, and I became absolutely addicted. Like if <laughs> if you could put D and D in a needle, I'd be shooting that stuff up every day. Like it was, <laughs> it was crazy. Um, and then he wanted to stop and it was like with, I was getting withdrawal symptoms I was like I can't be having this uh. I, I need to keep going and so I, I, I decided I'll start DMing then and said if, if I can't be a player I'll be a DM damn it <laughs> but that gotcha. yeah but it, it's just through repetitive uh, play that's that's how you end up learning you know you, you, you can read as much as you as you want about it I, I get, uh, some people that it works you know by just by reading that can be enough but i find the best experience is by le is by doing because that's how you're go you're going to make mistakes and you're going to learn from those you know mistakes and you're going to get the best experience from it yeah that's very true i was going to say even though i i read everything i could get my hands on i would still have moments where i was trying to figure out how to do something and i'd have to call up my friend and be like hey this is what I want to do, <laughs> but I don't know how the rules work. <laughs> so yeah. Um, right, we got another one. Where we got one here from Crow Rock HD. If it hasn't already been asked, would you please elaborate on Donald as Donna, female champion of women's rights, <laughs> or how did you begin your writing process? Has this changed or developed throughout this project? Uh, well, with Donald, I will say, I never intended him to be that, but really it's like, I mean, it's like I said, some of the things he said, that if you just kind of like change him around to a woman, it comes across a lot different. <laughs> um, especially when he's like, I don't need no man, I don't want you to help me, I can do everything by myself. Um, that sort of idea, yeah, it, it comes across quite different. Um, oh yeah. Donna. But, um... <laughs> In terms of my writing process has changed, I will say, like, the original idea that I had for the campaign has changed quite a lot, even just through doing the videos. Um, what I've tried to do is, is add more spontaneity, because I think that that helps the story grow, and it, it adds more intricacies and interest to it. So I, I don't... I, I've tried to keep myself kind of loose, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Um, got a couple left from Unfortunate Soul sixty nine. What do you think about adding visual dice rolls for the people that watch? Yeah, I think this is a response to like um, in my latest episode. I was like, people are gonna think we're cheating. <laughs> um, I'm definitely considering it. I I do think there is that element though that like no matter if i put them or if i don't somebody will be like that's not that didn't happen um well that's the thing is <laughs> and this i think the, the visual dice roll i think just it just adds a nice layer to it because i mean yeah. I, I i i think it was relic was the first one i saw doing it he recorded his D, &D beyond so you see the dice rolling oh, on that one yeah how i, I do could it. do that yeah yeah definitely you could do it um yeah. how i do mine is i actually have green screen videos of a d20 from rolls one to 20 which are found on youtube 
it's easy enough but i'll do the rolls on roll i'll do the rolls on run t on roll 20 and then i just find the dice that's going to match up with that number so there's the visual aspect of it but the actual roll wasn't done on the camera because roll 20s version i think you can get animated dice but it it, it looks really choppy uh, and it's just uh, and otherwise it's just a click a case of you click and it goes bloop and it shows up on a little chat screen no, it's like oh number. yeah there's a number it's like well that yeah, that's doesn't... not that's not quite as aesthetic no exactly it doesn't look so good so having that little anyway it unfortunately i can only find d20s i can't find all the other sizes that i'd, I'd like to use so i just sort of i was like right i'll just use it for d20s any other type of rolls it's just they're just going to get the thing come up that'll do but adding um adding visual dice is fine it's a, it's a nice little touch but again yeah. it's like you said it if people are going to question the dice rolls, it won't matter if you do recordings, you put up whatever. People, yeah. if, if they're going to question it once, they probably might question it again. <laughs> it's like, oh, look, guys, I, I live rolled is... this. I, this. It's not my fault it's 17 D20s in a row, uh, not 20s in a row. <laughs> All I can say is I keep the authentic rolls, and some of them are as crazy as they turn out. Mm. Oh, yeah. I, I have a... So if it's a for me if it's like a nat one or a nat twenty like it's gonna go above and beyond or <laughs> below like what the sort of expectation is but then I do have sort of kind of like what you're saying like how I do is it I'll have like if they roll between this and that number this is what I plan on it's sort of gonna go in that direction and if it yes, yes. if it's sort of this and that if it, if it's a slightly lower one then it's like that it's just when it gets it's when it hits the extremes. Like, yeah. <laughs> like when my, my characters were crossing that river, they were never meant to be, no one was meant to be going, falling into the river and getting swept away. That was never part of the plan. <laughs> and it was a nat one. And I was like, I can't believe this. Like, of course I can. It's D&D. &D, it's going to happen. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, that is the spontaneity, though. Especially oh, yeah. like, like you were saying, the extremes, it kind of forces you to think like, okay, what do I do with that extreme? You know. Um, oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But that's 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 the beauty of it, though, isn't it? But when you're doing Dungeons and Dragons, it's it's adapting to the situation. But um, the final question is from Drew Ablo. What's your favorite song? Song like music. Well, they haven't specified. I don't know if there's D and D specifics, but. I mean, yeah. Do you have a oh. do you have a particular song? It could just be you know something pop culture or uh, maybe from an anime. Oh, this is so hard to be put on the spot. Um, oh. so in general, when I listen to music, like I listen to different things for different moods. When I'm writing, I like to listen to like movie soundtracks. All right. Um, yeah. In terms of like general music, uh, lately I've been listening to Bury the Light on repeat, which is probably like an old song. Hmm. I think like, that's old news, but it's the one that comes to mind. Um, in terms of like soundtracks, if I'm writing, um, I love listening to the Game of Thrones soundtrack because um, I think his name's Remin Jawadi. He's so brilliant. Um, I love his um, his music. Mm. So yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That is that is one of the things that, that hooked me with that. Uh, we're going back to yes. Game of Thrones now. It was <laughs> I absolutely <laughs> loved the music on that. Ah, oh. ah. Oh. Yeah, that that was the one thing. Well, one of the things about season eight that was perfect. Yes, and that is pretty much the only thing that could be said for that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like, <laughs> you know, it was like the the settings, the character costumes, everything was beautiful except for the writing. Mm -hmm. It just made me want to die. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hmm. yeah, she just forgot about the, she just forgot about the ships. Like, okay. <laughs> but um, that is a conversation I think we could have for another day. Uh, that is going to just yeah. about wrap it up for tonight's episode of Roll for Discussion. 
uh, Coco Mealy, thank you again so much for taking part in this. It has been an absolute delight to have you on, and I'm sure all your fans have enjoyed what you have told us tonight. And they look forward to whatever is next to come in your in your current campaign. And if you'd like to say a few words before we close down. Uh, well, thank me, thank you for having me. It was very fun. Laughed a lot. Um, so many questions. I hope I answered everything and didn't ramble too much. Um, and I'm going to get right to work on the next episode very soon. <laughs> I say, don't worry about the rambling. I am the absolute master at rambling. If, pe if people <laughs> people don't stop me, I will just talk for three hours straight. They'll be like, oh, was there a guest here? Oh, I'm, I'm sure there was. <laughs> but um, thank you again very much. And to the viewers, if you've enjoyed this content and would like to see more, then, then, bleh, bleh, then please like the video, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below and share it with your friends. I also offer an invite to all the content creators for the President D&D genre to come onto this podcast and have a discussion. You can find me in my Discord group, link in the description. Until then, good night, mateys. <laughs>